I'm going to start by assuming two things. My first assumption is that you have a message to share. I mean, it could be just a simple, positive statement. It could be something that helps someone be more healthy in their body. It could be something that helps them grow a better organic garden. It could be something that helps them close better real estate or do better in business. But my first assumption is you have a message to share. My second assumption is your message is unique. You know why? Because you're unique. You were endowed as the Declaration of Independence, as by your creator with certain unalienable rights. And that also means that you were created as a unique individual. So as my friend Jonathan Sprinkle says, don't be a copy. So the first assumption is you have a message to share. And if you even feel like you don't, hopefully by the end of today's show, you'll feel like you do. The second one is that it is unique. Now, when you put those two things together, the question that comes up is, when would now be a really great time to share your message with the world? Well, the answer to that question is now. And we're gonna be covering today's show how to share your message with the world. Ed Talks Live is next. Hey, what's up, party people? My name's Ed Rush, five-time number one best-selling author, your host for the most positive place on the planet for insanely implementable ideas. We're here live every Tuesday and Thursday, 10 o'clock Pacific, one o'clock Eastern, and I mean it. When I say this is the most positive place on the planet, for insanely implementable ideas, I mean both those things, positive and insanely implementable. If you haven't already done so, that's a hard word to get done fast, Insa phrase, <laughs> insanely implementable. If you haven't already done so, jump on the right-hand side on chat, tell me who you are, where you're from, what you do. Chat is booming today. I'm gonna jump in and say hello to all of my good friends, Barry and Wendell and Wendy and Diana. I was talking about you, Diana, when I was talking about organic gardening. Uh, okay, we're gonna roll up our sleeves today and talk about how you can develop content and share your content uh, with the world. I'm actually going to give you two roads, two options that you can use today. But before I do that, let me just tell you how I've been feeling. And, and by the way, I'm not going to go into the news. I'm not even going to go into current events today. We do that from time to time. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I decided we're going to keep this one positive today. We're just going to stay on top of the world uh, because you have a world to conquer. And I want to start by talking about staying on top of the world. You know, there's a view, uh, if you're in an F-18, flying an F-18 like I did for about 11 years, there's a 500 foot view. That's really low in an airplane like that. I've flown down at 200 feet and 100 feet uh, at 500 miles an hour, uh, but really, really fast and really low. Here's what you can see. You can see things going by really quickly, but what you don't get is perspective. That's what you get when you take your airplane up to 30,000 feet, or in the case, that I did once in the F-18 up to 50,000 feet. Now, when I was at 50,000 feet in an F-18, uh, I was out over the Pacific Ocean, by the way, doing a test on an airplane. And I, it's, it's actually hard to get that high in an airplane. The air gets very thin. There's a reason why airliners fly around at about 36,000 feet. It was interesting on this particular day because the sun was actually, uh, 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 it was about three, four in the afternoon. So the sun wasn't directly overhead. I actually could look out of my cockpit out of the top of my cockpit, and you could actually see it starting to get dark. You could actually start to see space in the middle of the day. But I was out over the Pacific Ocean, and I could see clear across California. I mean, literally, I could see across the entire state all the way into Arizona. I could see almost all the way down to Baja, Mexico. I mean, I could see that entire peninsula going down there all the way down, at least about halfway down the Baja Peninsula, and I don't know how far I could see out in the Pacific Ocean. What you get when you're at altitude is you get perspective. So let me tell you, as someone who I believe has some perspective, I know times have been hard. I know the road is bumpy right now, but with some perspective, let me tell you a few things. First of all, it's going to be okay. Okay, it's going to be okay. In fact, sometimes it's the bumps in the road that get us to the thing that we need to get to in the first place. Sometimes growing is hard. And as a culture, we're growing right now. We're expanding right now. And sometimes that's hard. The second thing I will tell you, and this is very, very important, 
is that your voice is more necessary now than it's ever been. Did you catch what I just said? Your voice is more necessary now than it's ever been. I'm just going to tell you internally over the last year or so, the way I've felt about social media, things like YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, okay, uh, Twitter. Here's what I've felt about them. I felt, forget it. I'm out. I don't like the way the dialogue is on a lot of social media platforms. I don't like a person's ability to hide behind anonymity and say mean things and cast mean words across the aisle. And I've seen some of the most divisive battles happening on those social media platforms. And I said, you know what, forget it. Forget it. I'm out of here. I don't want to be a part of it. I don't want to support it. And I will just tell you in full transparency, I'm not a big fan. Okay. I'm still, I've never been a big fan. I don't use it. Most of my phone's usually off by about five o'clock at night. I don't like, I don't like it and I don't use it. But you know what I realized? That, that part of your job as an entrepreneur is to go on a saving expedition. You're going on a life-saving ex expedition. You're going on a rescue operation. And part of what I realized about social media is part of your job as a good person with a good heart and a good conscience and a message that's going to change the world is that part of your job is to go into the dark places so that you can shine the light so that people can go, hey, wait a second, that's the person that I want to follow. And so today's show is designed to show you how to create content in such a way that it engages the hearts and minds of your audience so that you can build a movement and so that you can change the world, even if it's one life at a time. Before I do that, I want to say hello to some of our friends. Good morning, Dr. Wendy Lee. Good to see you. She was in here early, man, like 15 minutes before I was checking in the chat and she was in here before that. Hello, Diana, good to see you as well. Wendell Bugs, what's up, my man? Hey, Robert, welcome back. Uh, good to see you as well. Hello, Empowered Way from Dallas, Texas. I'm sure I know who you are, uh, but it says Empowered Way. Um, hello, Robert. One of my messages to the world is Ed, help Ed Rush become president. I love it, man. Uh, thank you, we're gonna get there, brother. We're gonna get there. Hello, Barry, good to see you as well. Hello, hello, Arisha. CEO and grant writer, $31 million worth of grants she's written. Come on. Uh, what's up, Rick? Good to see you as well. Hey, John, welcome back to the show. <laughs> and Diana says, gardens are a magical place to keep grounded in these challenging times. I love it. Oh, hey, what's up, Catherine? Good to see you. Um, all right, welcome back, uh, everybody, to the show. Welcome, everybody who's new. If you get a chance, click that like button down there. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell notification next to that. Uh, and we're gonna get rocking and rolling. All right, so I'm gonna jump up on the on the whiteboard. You all know my favorite place to be. Maybe one of my favorite places to be in the entire world is up on the whiteboard looking at this camera right here. Uh, and today we're gonna roll up our sleeves and dial it in. And I'm gonna talk about some techniques on how to share your content with the world. I've actually got five main things. So grab your pen and write these down. We should hopefully have some time towards the end for q and I'm not totally sure about that. I do owe you. Uh, coming up at some point, we're going to do an a, a, a open Q&A show where you can get some coaching. And by the way, I've got a totally new format for doing that uh, where you can actually come on the actual show and ask your question live. I'm very excited about being able to pull this off from a technology standpoint, uh, and it's coming right around the corner. What's up, Michael Simmons from Dallas, my cyber scorecard. I don't know what business you're in, but if you're in cybersecurity, you are in a good business, Michael, my friend, uh, right now. All right, so today's episode is how to, how to share your message uh, with the world. And by the way, just by way of announcement, on Thursday, I'm going to do a brand new show called How to Write a Book in a Month. I'm going to talk about how to really unpack your content quickly so that you can get onto Amazon. And right now, I think Amazon, writing a book and publishing on Amazon is, is one of the single best places in the world to share your content. I'm going to give you some reasons why uh, here in just a second. Okay, so let's get cranking. One of the best ways to get your message is by sharing your message. Okay, now you're like, wait a second, Ed, how do you get your message by sharing your message? Okay, now, let me just tell you, uh, so this is number one, get message by sharing. Now, one of the biggest issues that a lot of the times I work with people like coaching members or students, and I'm talking to them about sharing their content in, in, with the world, and what they do is they sit down at their computer, 
and they pull up a Word document or a Google Doc, and it's blank, it's just white, okay? And they sit down, you've probably experienced this before, and they sit down, and then they just stare at their screen for a little while. I don't know if you've ever watched or read any of the Winnie the Pooh books, but you know, I have a two-year-old. I go from 15 to two, okay? Uh, I have a two-year-old, and we read Winnie the Pooh books. And there's a, a part where Winnie the Pooh, when Winnie the Pooh really wants to get something done, Winnie will sit down and he'll go, okay, think, 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 think. And that's the way most entrepreneurs approach content. You pull up a blank Word document and you go, think, 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 think. Now, my friend Michael Haig, screenwriting coach, who many of you learned from this week on my one-day training, um, my friend Michael Haig in his book, he says, you know, uh, 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 writer's block isn't you sitting in front of your computer not being able to write. Writer's block is you sitting on your couch for the second straight week watching Netflix, okay? And a lot of times as entrepreneurs, you've experienced that before where you know that you need to be sharing your content with the world, but you don't necessarily know where to start, so you end up doing something else. And my first a a a suggestion to you is to sh get your message by sharing your message. So how do you do that? Well, right now, what you do is you commit. And you say, all right, Ed, I'm going to start sharing my message on YouTube. I'm gonna start sharing my message on Facebook. Every week, I'm going to write one article, and I'm gonna put it up on LinkedIn Publisher, or I'm gonna put it up on my blog, or I'm, I'm gonna put it up on Medium. And you commit to a certain piece in a certain P P I E C spelling, okay? Certain piece in a certain time. I'm going to do one article every week. I'm gonna send one email to my list every week. You commit, and then what you do is you do it, okay? Let's say you're going, you're going to commit to doing a single video that you're gonna put on Instagram every single day, five days a week. You know what you do? You wake up in the morning and you're like, I'm gonna do my video today. Then you turn around and you start talking. You go, I don't like that. I'm gonna record this over again. And here's what happens when you get the message by sharing the message. You wake up in the morning and you come up with all kinds of new ideas. So for example, this morning, um, I was browsing through something. I think I was actually looking through a magazine this morning, with like seven o'clock this morning. And when I was flipping through the magazine, I saw this advertisement that was the book of the month. You've, you've seen those before, like jelly of the month, book of the month, you know, uh, a condiment of the month, uh, mustard of the month. Well, I saw this thing, it was book of the month. And as I was flipping through, I saw the book of the month. And I thought, huh, that's kind of interesting. They send a book every month. And then I thought, you know what's fun? I wrote a book in less than a month. Actually, some of you know the story. I've got my book, 21 Day Miracle, sitting right here. Some of you know that I wrote this book I went from idea to number one best-selling author for this book in 20 days. My goal was 21 days, we broke it by one day. We actually went from idea to published in 19 days. And I thought to myself, well, that's a book in a month, not the book of the month. I thought that's a book in a month. And this morning, while I was sitting there flipping through the newspaper and I went book of the month, book in a month, I wrote a book in a month. Well, maybe I'll show some of my students how I wrote a book in a month and how they can too. And guess what our show on Thursday is? <laughs> actually, the interesting thing about this is next, uh, this week, my weekly flight brief is actually going to be about this process. Now, here's the reason I'm sharing it this way. What happens when you commit, when you say, I'm gonna do this in a certain period of time uh, and I'm gonna do a certain thing, is what happens is your brain goes and your antenna turns on. And then all of a sudden you start to see things that you never saw before. So for example, one day you're just driving down the street and you see one of those sign flipping guys and what they have on the sign is a very clever advertisement. And you think, you know what? How they wrote that is really clever. I'm gonna write about that on my next article. Or maybe you're having a walk with one of your kids or your grandkids and they say something that you think is hysterical and you go, you know what, I'm gonna put that in my video. I'm gonna use that line that you just said right there in your video. Or you're just looking through your inbox and you're reading about somebody else's teaching something else. You're like, you know what? That's interesting. I'm gonna be sharing that this month. You get your message by 
sharing your message. You don't get your message by sitting around thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking. You get it by doing. And the first way to do that is to start. Okay? So that's the first one real quick. I'm going to jump in the chat real quick. What's up, Russ Gordon? Man, what a great conversation I had with my man yesterday on the phone. Get your message by sharing your message. Commit to doing it. Okay? So the first step in content creation is to get up and do it. Now, let's be transparent with each other. Is it going to be good? Oh, maybe. Is it going to be great? Probably not at first. Is it going to be excellent kind of stuff that, 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 that you'll get uh, thousands and thousands of shares? Maybe, maybe it will be, uh, but maybe it won't be. I mean, I will just tell you in full transparency, when I started creating content, uh, I was not good. <laughs> I mean, I was pretty good on stage, I think, back then. Uh, but even I look back on some of the talks that I gave. Uh, there's this video. I think I've told you this story before. It's still on YouTube. The sad thing is, for some reason, this became one of my most popular videos on YouTube. I should actually find it just for fun because then I can make fun of myself. Hang on a second. Let me see if I can find... Let me see if I can pull this up quickly. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> let me let me see if it, let me see if this pulls up. Oh. Oh. I'm about to make fun of myself. So. Um, well, here I'll show you. I'm going to share my screen, and at the very least. <laughs> oh man! Uh, I've, I'm sorry. I, 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 have to, I have to. I have to make fun of myself on the, I'm trying to pull it up and show you. Anyway, the bottom line is I'm sitting in this office wearing this goofy jacket, like this weird, like '70s jacket that I, for some reason, I thought was attractive at the time. Uh, and I'm sharing. I'm sharing in this really blurry screen. The video is not very good, and I'm hemming and hawing. And I watched this video just a few months ago, and I'm like. Who let me put a video like that up there? But the truth is, I needed to create that video to get to the one that we're doing now, or some of the better ones that I've done. I, you get your message by sharing your message, okay? Now, going in to number two. Make your message easy to understand and implement. Make your message easy to understand and implement. Now, I'm going to give you a super insider secret to the personal development and business world, okay? So it's make your message easy to understand and implement it. Here's why this is so important. When people get into your content, there is a decision someone is going to make as they move into your content. And the decision they're making is, can I do this now? Write that down. Can I do this now? Now let's assume that what you're teaching someone is actually quite complex and takes multiple steps. So for example, in a moment, I'm going to be showing you how to create content for your book and how to publish a book. It's about an eight step process and there are some bumps in the road along the way. There are some challenges along the way. So how do you take something that's complex in its steps? Although potentially easy to understand, what you do is you break it down into implementable steps. The reason for that is one of the most important responses in marketing is I can do this. If your market or your clients can turn back to you and say, I can do this, you're in great shape. You're in even better shape if somebody says this, if somebody says that's for me. So. Two of the most important phrases that your market can say back to you are, I can do this or end that's for me. And the way that you do this is you take the principles, which can be complicated and in certain cases complex, and you break them down into beginning steps that give someone a taste and a smell of victory. Okay? So let me give you an example. Uh, I am in the process right now of learning boxing and jujitsu. Now, at this boxing um, uh, uh, studio that I go to, there's like a big boxing ring, 
okay? And every once in a while, there are these professional boxers that get up there and I mean, <laughs> like quick, okay? You see like quick feet, quick hands, and I'm thinking, how in the world am I ever going to? But, but, over the past week, I've learned like five different combinations. I mean, I'm talking about you start by learning how to jab, boom, boom. Then you learn how to boom, boom, one, two. Then you learn how to jab uh, uh, right and then hook, okay? And then, and then what you start to build up to are, is like jab, right, hook, low hook, jab, you know, like you start to build, and I've, got, I've built up to at this point six punch combinations. And I started with a very simple jab. So when I learned how to do that well, I felt, man, I, I, I'm like learning how to box, right? And then you learn how to jab and punch. Then you learn how to jab and punch, but you need to learn how to move your feet a little bit better. Then, and then the next thing you know, you're up to a six punch combination. And you're starting to feel like, you know what? I'm starting to get this. Now think about this for a second. If all you did was show up, and the first thing the instructor did, this guy's like a professional boxing coach, right? Really cool dude, wants to write a book, which I think is cool, okay? <laughs> as soon as he found out I was author, he's like, God, I'd like to write a book. If the first thing he did was go, hey, everybody here knows a six punch combination. If you can't do this, you're out of here. I would try it, I would fail, I would do my whole hour, I would leave the gym and never come back. Because your prospect, your market, doesn't want to feel like they failed. So you're going to start and give them something that they can get a hold of and experience some success at first. So what I said was, you're gonna, remember what I said earlier, I said you might just turn your camera around and you might just start talking to Instagram for one minute every single week, you might just do that. Is it gonna be great? No, nah, maybe it might not be, but that's okay, you can delete it later. What I'm trying to do is get you over the hump on content creation, get you started so that you can experience a little bit of success and then move on to something better. Now, a year later, you're gonna look back at the, some of these early posts, some of the early writings, and be like, oh my gosh, I don't even believe like I wrote some of that stuff. And that's okay, because you needed that to get to where you are today. Now, let me show you one of the most powerful principles inside of the personal development world. And I'm gonna tell you something right now that will blow your mind. In fact, when I tell this to you, you're gonna look at things completely differently for the rest of your life. And when I tell you this, some of you will take this tool that I'm gonna teach you right now and you're going to use it successfully right now, okay? So, the principle is that some of the most powerful movements in the world, some of the most popular books in the world, some of the most well-known authors in the world did it because they repackaged something that's very common, okay? A commonly held belief system. They simply took that and they repackaged it into something new. Okay, so for example, take, take look at the diet world. The diet world has done nothing more over the last 100 years of repackaging something common into something different, okay? Let me give you an example. Uh, there are fitness products on the market uh, that where you have this ab workout, okay? How long do you think people have been working on this area of basically for their entire lives, okay? There is a book out. I'm gonna show you a couple books. Uh, there is a book out called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I'm gonna show you uh, this book. This is the book on Amazon. You've probably read this book or at least heard of this book. This is The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen R. Covey, which is Powerful Lessons in Personal Change. This book is nothing more than some of the most commonly held success principles that have been in existence for the history of the world packaged into a new idea, which is this seven habits idea. And then all of a sudden, people started becoming seven habits people. Well, look, there are seven habit people 200 years ago. It just wasn't called the seven habits. Okay, you've heard, for example, of Rick Warren's Purpose Driven Life. The Purpose Driven Life was nothing more than a principle that people have been living by for years and years and years that didn't have a name that he repackaged with a name. Okay, here's another one. This is a book by a good friend of mine, by the way, whose name is Hal Elrod. Some of you have read Miracle Morning before. Uh, Hal uh, really created this beautiful movement and has, ha has been extremely successful uh, at selling a lot of books in this Miracle Morning brand. Now, what 
fundamentally is the miracle morning. The miracle morning is when you get up early, you're going to get a lot more done than when you sleep in. Look, you only had to go back to the book of Proverbs to see that there's a proverb about those who wake up early and those who wake up late, okay? And so the idea of waking up early in the morning and getting a fresh start to your day is not a new success principle, but the miracle morning is a very clever repackaging of a long time held success principle that created something new. I'm gonna give you a couple more examples, by the way. I'm gonna go over here to this next book on Amazon. This is a book called Never Eat Alone. Some of you have read this book. I certainly have. I've met Keith Frazzi, really nice guy, and a really, really good book. Never Eat Alone is a book, okay, about networking with people and getting to know people. It's a book about using your time to connect with people who are good for your network. That's a success principle that's been around for about 6,000 years that was repackaged into a new philosophy called Never Eat Alone. I'm gonna show you one more book, by the way. There's another book, which you may have read, called 21 Day Miracle. 21 Day Miracle is nothing more, I mean, it was a, it, you know, it's a good book. I'm not saying nothing more. 21 Day Miracle was a repackaging of a success principle that's been around forever. The success principle is move fast to accomplish your goals, do it in less time, do it faster so that you can achieve more. That's not something new. That's something that's been around forever, but the 21 Day Miracle repackaging has been around ever since I wrote the book, okay? So it was a new packaging of an old idea. So one of the best ways that you can share your message, get your message while sharing your message, is to make your message easy to understand and implement by repackaging something that's been previously taught in a new way that's delivered in your way, and so therefore it becomes your content, okay? So that's number two. Uh, I'm gonna jump in the chat real quick, and I've got, uh, by the way, I have, I have three more to share with you, and hopefully I'll be able to get you, um, uh, get you some um, uh, Q&A as well by the end. Uh, any thoughts, comments, or anything like that are obviously more than welcome as we go uh, today. All right, so, when it comes to content, you can speak it first, or you can write it first. When it comes to content, you can speak it first or you can write it first. Okay, so this is where I'm gonna go into what I call the two roads, okay? And the two roads go like this. I'm a person, uh, this is speak, okay? And when I say speak, what I mean is you can speak it on a live stream, you can speak it up on stage, you can speak it to a friend of yours, you can speak it into a microphone all by yourself at home, you can speak it into a podcast, you can speak it into social media uh, as a video if you want to, but the first one is for you to speak it. Se essentially, it's you taking your content and saying it. The second one is for you to write it, okay? Now, this is these are the two content roads, okay? So write these down, it's speaking and writing. I know people who have written over 10 books by actually speaking their book into their phone as they're walking around their office. Then they had it transcribed and edited and put into a book, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, there are some challenges with the editing, just so you know, but there's nothing wrong with that process. And I, know, I certainly know people like me uh, who've written their books, literally sat down and typed their books until they were done, okay? What you need to do as a content creator or as a person who's interested in sharing your content is decide which of these is best for you? Are you, for example, the kind of person that likes to sit down and write because that process is really creative for you and in that process, new things come out of your writing? Or are you the kind of person who gets new ideas as you're talking through new ideas, okay? So, uh, for example, this is where I started. Almost all my content started right here. I will tell you that at least, and, and I mean this, by the way, at least 50% of my best ideas I have come up with literally in the middle of teaching something, okay? So I'm gonna be on stage talking about something else and I will go off the topic for a second and I'll riff on something new and all of a sudden in the back of my mind, I'm like, oh man, that is a great new concept. I can't believe you've never thought of that before and I'm thinking about it while I'm delivering it. There's something about the live audience 
that, that turns my brain waves up significantly and content gets created that wasn't there before. Some of you who are on a training that I did just a few weeks ago heard my new approach to goal setting. And in that new approach to goal setting, there was one idea in there that I actually may end up writing my next book about. It was so transformative to the way that I was thinking things that I actually spent the next two days dwelling in thought about how transformative this one idea was. In fact, it's so transformative that I believe it will completely change the way people set goals forever. Okay, and I, I'll tell you, just between us, okay, in the middle of the training, I said something. It just came, I was thinking about this all of a sudden as I'm teaching it, and it just came out. And as it came out, I remember thinking, whoa, that is totally new. I mean, I never thought about it like that. And much like the point that I shared on packaging things, it's not brand new. It's not a new idea, but it is a new packaging and sequencing of ideas, which makes it completely awesome, okay? Now, I did that from speaking, but there have been times when I'm sitting down and I'm writing, and all of a sudden I come up with some great new idea, and I'm sitting there because I was writing, okay? So for example, some of you remember, there's a book, there's a chapter inside a 21 Day Miracle called The 21 Day Inner Warrior Miracle, and inside that I have some exercises that I teach and do. So one of the exercises is called I Feel Amazing, where basically you stand up and jump up and down uh, and scream, I feel amazing, I feel amazing, I feel amazing. And then after that, you feel amazing. Well, I've been doing that with my kids for a really long time, so that wasn't new in the book. But as I was delivering that, I came up with names for other things that I had done in the past but didn't have names for it. So for example, I have a technique inside of the book called the present-minded meal. I have another technique in the book called the gorilla. I have another technique in the book uh, called uh, Rock Your Energy. I had done these things for years, but I had not named them before. And by the way, uh, if you don't have this book, I think there's a website here. Hold on a second. There it is. Ed Rush, go to this website. EdRushBook.com, okay? Um, if you don't have 21 Day Miracle. So, when you speak it first or write it first, it doesn't matter which one you choose. The idea is you're going to start creating content with the method that you prefer best. So for example, when I'm speaking it, usually what I will do is I'll come up with a short outline. Like for example, today, this is the outline uh, for today's show. I'll print that out and then I'll start sharing it. And then in the process, I'll throw some things out and I'll keep some things and the message becomes more refined and more refined and more refined, okay? And that's the way I do it when I speak it or write it first and it's completely your call how you do that, okay? Jump in the chat real quick. Thank you, Barry. When it comes to your content, you can speak it first or you can write it first. And again, if you have questions, we should have time to be able to take those. Thank you, Delisa. It's edrushbook.com if you want to get 21 Day Miracle. Uh, by the way, if you want to get, currently 21 Day Miracle is, um, I don't have this link, this new link. I'm going to say Delisa, so be ready to type this in the chat. Uh, I, um, uh, the book on Amazon is 15 bucks. If you want to order 10 or more, I've had, a, I've had over, a thousand books sold over the last month from people, uh, financial advisors who are, who are taking them and giving them to their clients. If you're interested in getting more than 10, don't, don't do this if you're just gonna order one or two. If you're interested in ordering more than 10 books, you can go to edrush.com slash 21 day book and I've discounted them half price if you wanna order in bulk, okay? Um, all right, cool. So that's that as far as that. I'm gonna go into number four and five, and then we're gonna wrap up today with some, uh, some Q&A, okay? Um, so, road number one that I just wrote on the board is the live streaming social media or the speaking route. So this is this side of the board, and I said there were two roads to creating content. You can speak your content or you can write your content, okay? So road number one on the left-hand side is you speaking your content. Inside of this, my first recommendation, you haven't heard me teach this before because this, cause, because this is brand new, uh, is inside of this is to create four versions. So if you're gonna speak something, create four versions. And usually, it's best to work backwards, okay? Now, it's not gonna, it's not gonna feel normal to work backwards, but I'm gonna show you why this is so important. Uh, to work backwards, okay? The four versions is a one hour version, a 20, sorry, 
a 10 minute version, a 20 second version, and a two second version. Be like, what? A two second version? Yes, okay? So let's say you're going to help people. I'm gonna go back to you, Diana. Let's say you're gonna help people grow an organic garden. So the first thing you're going to do is outline a one hour version of you teaching someone to create an organic garden. Maybe there's three or four or five steps. Maybe the first step is for them to plan out the kind of foods that they want to grow. And maybe the second, I'm just making this up, st stuff up, okay, but it's probably kind of close, I would, I would imagine. The second step would be to understand which foods grow best together and which foods grow during which season. So the first thing is you decided, I want some kale and some carrots and maybe some eggplant, a little, some onions, maybe a little cilantro. I'm gonna have some thyme growing out there in the garden. I'm actually looking at our garden when I do that. And over here, maybe I plant a couple of trees, grow some stone fruit. So this is my idea of how the garden goes. And the second thing I'm going to do is go, I'm gonna understand how, what grows better next to each thing. Because you know, there's some things that grow next to each other well and some things that don't. So for example, like I think carrots and tomatoes like each other. I think that's true because I think there's a book called Carrots Love Tomatoes. Okay, but I'm not sure about like onions and tomatoes. Maybe they'll start tasting like each other, okay? So I'm gonna find that second step. You're gonna teach people how to do that and then you're gonna give people resources on how to do that. Third step in your process is you're gonna show them how to get great soil. This is a combination of you know good soil, organic soil, some compost, okay, the right kind of watering, not too much, not too little. So that's number three. Number four, you're gonna show them how to propagate and plant seeds. And number five, you're gonna show them how to avoid pests and weeds the organic way, all right? So those are your five steps. And I, again, I don't know your content, but I'm guessing that's kind of close. I'm not even a gardener, okay? You already know that, my wife is. But that's my one hour version. And in my one hour version, I have an introduction, I have a story that I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna teach each of these five with an example. And again, it doesn't have to be an hour, it could be 45 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever. But you've created this one hour version, okay? Now, the next thing you're going to do is you're gonna create your 10 minute version. This 10 minute version is the highly condensed version, a little bit of less flourish and bots, okay? Like a little less story and a little more down to the point. I'm gonna show you today five main things that you need to do to grow a great organic garden. Number one is this, da 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 da. Number two is this, da 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 da. If you want more information, boom, come and see me. Now, the 20 second version goes like this. If you've been interested in finally growing your own organic garden and eating food that you grow, there are three main mistakes people make and five main things to do. And I'm gonna tell you all eight of those things in my upcoming course on organic gardening. Boom, that's 20 seconds. All you did in that 20 seconds is tell people the what and the why, not the how. Did you catch that? Now you've got a two second version. If you've been interested in growing your own food that you can eat, follow the link below. Okay, did you see how that worked? Okay, but, but the thing about it is, you can't, sometimes you can't get to this unless you start with this, okay? So if you're going to speak it, start with four versions. So start with this one, the longer version, then condense it down to 10, then make it 20 seconds, then make it two, okay? And the idea here is what you're after the entire time is you're after this. You're after, wow, okay, so let me tell you a quick story. So I was at a networking event, and I hate networking events. Like, I hate it, hate it, hate it, I don't wanna do it, I don't like it, I don't like it, okay? Now, here's the kind of networking I don't, I don't mind. I don't mind networking events at events that I just spoke at, okay? Because if I'm there at the networking event, I, so the reason I don't like networking is because I don't like this question. So tell me what you do. Oh my gosh, I don't like answering that question, okay? So but I like it when I'm at an event where I just spoke, because nobody asked me, tell me what you do. They're just asking me questions about what I taught, which is what I like to talk about, okay? So I was at this, uh, this like five years ago, I was at this mastermind group. I was in this group where they had this cocktail reception the night before the mastermind met. There was about 80 people, and I'm walking around this cocktail reception. Oh my gosh, talking to 80 people. So tell me about what you do. So tell me what you do. So tell me what you do. So tell me, oh man, I don't want to talk about this anymore. Okay, so, so I decided, because mindset is everything, I said, you know what? I'm gonna have a good mindset about this. I'm gonna have a good heart about this networking thing. So what I did was I spent an hour and a half, the whole cocktail reception, practicing different ways of delivering what do you do. So at first, people were like, okay, okay. And by the end, people were like, 
wow, okay? So I would do something like this. Well, actually I'm a former fighter pilot. And back in 1995, I raised my hand and I swore to protect the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I spent the first 15 years of my career protecting our country from enemies foreign, and now I'm spending the next 15 years protecting our country against enemies domestic. Wow. Okay, so that's the kind of thing I would say. People go, what? Wow. Or I would say, uh, I'm an advisor to some of the biggest brands in the world. Someone comes to me with 100 things you're doing, and a hundred things that you feel guilty that you're not doing, and I clear the table and just show you the two or three things that are gonna make the biggest difference in your income, impact, and lifestyle. Wow, and I tried like 17 different versions of that to try to get to wow. This is what you're doing with your content. You're creating content until someone goes, wow, wait a second, wow. Wait a second, wow, okay? Now, once you've done this, once you've created this version, if you've taken the option of speaking your content. This is really, really important. Once you've done this, then package it into a book, okay? If you like to speak things first, do it all, package it into a book, okay? So I'm gonna catch up and chat real quick, uh, and, then, uh, and then I'm gonna do the last one, and then we're gonna wrap it up. Brian says, speaking of interactive format is useful because many people ask questions that force you to elaborate in many ways you have not or th previously thought of. Thank you for the link. Um, and <laughs> yes, you take that outline. I mean, that's, I don't know. Like I said, I, it's probably close. All right, so last, um, last one and then we're gonna wrap it uh, up today. So this one is the book publishing route. And so far, uh, today, we've talked about how to create content. If you're just watching this, the two options I gave were to speak your content or to write your content. And if you speak it first, then you should turn it into a book. And if you write it first, you should turn it into speaking. But let's talk about the writing route. Let's talk about what it takes to create your content in a writing method. So the first thing is, I get this question asked all the time. People say, hey, Ed, wait a second. Should I, if I'm gonna write a book, should I go by the traditional publishing route or should I go by the self-publishing route? And I will tell you, I'm gonna to get to the, the short answer and then I'm gonna tell you the longer version of the question. 99% of the time, the answer to that is that you're going to at least start with the self-publishing route. Here's the reason why. So if you are doing traditional publishing, like you're getting a tra traditional publishing deal uh, with a big, you know, like New York publishing house, there are a couple things going against you at first. The first thing going against you is their speed. Typically, like if I was to do a book contract right now, I would be launching the book about a year from now. By the time they get through the entire editing process, they get ready to launch and everything. And so there is a speed to market. For example, I'm gonna be working on my sixth book here with my book mentor people. And when I'm working on my sixth book, I can launch that book whenever I want to, okay? So the first thing is there's a speed to self-publishing. The second thing is to get the kind of advance that you want or the kind of notoriety that you want with a New York book publishing house. You need to have a foundation and a following. They're gonna be looking to see how many people follow you on social media, how many people do you have on your email list, how many people have bought your previous books. And so, um, and so if you have none of those, it's gonna be very difficult to get your, their attention and you may spend all of your marketing time trying to get their attention when you should've been out there trying to publish uh, your own book. And so if you will talk to, I know two book agents uh, very well, one of a really good friend of mine, uh, went, went to college together with actually, uh, will tell you one of the very first places to go is to self-publish so that you can build your movement, those people who have already bought your books and then you can move into more traditional uh, publishing. Either one of those is an option. The benefit to a traditional publishing route is you do get more bookstore exposure. But having said that, Amazon is responsible for about 70% uh, of current book sales right now. So if you're on Amazon, you've got it mostly covered. Okay, so the first thing is on the traditional route. Now the second thing is the process. How exactly do you go about writing your book? Well, the first one is that you write. Then you get a cover with your title and your subtitle. Then you edit. Then you uh, format and then you launch, okay? So let me walk through these. The first thing is you write, which is typically the hardest thing for people to get going, but in my opinion, it's the most enjoyable part. The second thing is you're gonna create a beautiful cover. The most important part about your book is the cover. No questions asked, 
asked hands down, people say, don't judge a book by its cover, but the reason they say that is because everyone judges a book by its cover. Okay, to create a great book, you need a great title and subtitle. My rules for title and subtitle is you should be able to say the title of your book and immediately have people go, oh, instead of, well, tell me what your book's about. So for example, one of my friends wrote a book called The Elephant is Yellow, and that book was about autism. <laughs> now, you wouldn't have known that by the title of the book. It sounds like some sort of kid's book. And when she told me the title of the book, I said, that's great for a story. Tell the Elephant is Yellow story, because it truly was a story. But in the title, give them a title or subtitle showing them what the book is about. So my book, for example, 21 Day Miracle. It's 21 Day Miracle, How to Change Anything in Three Short Weeks. I don't ever give this book to somebody and have them look at me and say, so what is this book about? You don't ever hand someone seven habits of highly effective people and they look at it and go, what is this about, okay? They don't do that because the promise of the book is on the cover. The next part is the editing. There's actually three pieces to the editing. There is, there is the content editing, the manuscript editing, and then the proofreading. Those are three separate things. We don't have time to go into those. Uh, oftentimes you'll have three separate editors for that. And then you're gonna format this in four uh, versions. Uh, actually, you're gonna have four documents in two versions. You're gonna have a Kindle version, which is going to have a Kindle cover and a Kindle inside, which is a .mobi or an EPUB, .epub file, a special file that you use on Amazon. There's people that can do this for you, okay? And so you'll have the cover and the insides for the, for that, for the Kindle, and then for the paperback, you're gonna have the cover and the insides, which are two different uh, uh, things, which is why you have four files. You're gonna upload those four files. You're gonna make sure that you're in the right category on Amazon, and if you do everything right, you will launch your book and start selling enough copies to be a bestseller. Now, I know I just went quickly through that process. I've helped over a thousand authors. I think the last time I counted, it was 1,071 authors go through this entire process and come out on the other side a bestseller. The largest majority, about 98% of the, those over 1,000 students actually became number one bestsellers. I don't know if you know about the 80-20 rule, but that completely flips the 80-20 rule uh, on its head, which is why I'll just tell you very quickly, this, um, uh, man, I didn't put the link in there. I'm gonna just say the link. It's edrush.com slash book mentor. edrush.com slash book, B-O-O-K, mentor, M-E-N-T-O-R, I'll write it up here. Um, edrush.com slash book mentor. This Tuesday, a week from today, uh, I'm launching this program. I'm taking, it's gonna be a group of about 10 students. We're all gonna work together to go through this process together to write, publish, and launch the books. And my guarantee to you at the end of this is you're gonna be a bestseller, okay? I'm gonna have you on, on my show. I'm gonna tell the world about your book. Uh, we're gonna launch it together. You're gonna go through my process that I've taken over a thousand people through, and we're gonna do it in a nice community. I used to do these in big events, 70, 800 people. We're gonna do it in a nice small community, and it's gonna last uh, three months as a group, and then a year you're gonna to get to work with me uh, in coaching for a year. Okay, so that's edrush.com slash book mentor. The last part of this process is what I call the Amazon jet stream. The Amazon jet stream is something I can't guarantee, but I can show you how to leverage it. Amazon knows how to sell books, and they know which books are outperforming other books, and if you can out, begin to outperform some of the books in your category, over time, Amazon will show you to more and to more and more and more and more people. I've sold over 30,000 copies of 21 Day Miracle, uh, and I will tell you that about 95% of the copies that were sold had nothing to do with me selling those. It wasn't like I sent people to Amazon. It's not like I sold them from the stage, which I did all those things. Most of the books sold organic to Amazon because I was in what Amazon calls their Amazon jet stream. This is where they start promoting you for free. We're gonna talk about this inside of Book Mentor. In fact, some of you on chat are already inside of this program. Okay, so I'm gonna jump into chat real quick and then I'm gonna do a quick uh, review of some of the things I taught and then I'm gonna stick around. If anyone has any questions, uh, I'll answer your questions and then we'll wrap up today's show. Don't forget uh, my show on Thursday. I'm gonna go uh, much deeper into the idea of how to write a book in a month. I'm gonna talk about the content creation process. 
uh, and you will be amazed at what you can accomplish uh, with some dedicated and focused time. It, it, to answer the question, I spent about four hours a day for about seven straight days writing and the rest of the process was the editing. And I really spent a lot of time on that book, okay, uh, in a short period of time, but, but, um, but it was worth it, okay? So let me jump in and say hello in chat real quick. Uh, thank you, Barry. Create content until someone says, wow, package it into a book. Uh, Brian says, I buy a lot of books, haven't been to a bookstore in over a decade. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, uh, and the answer to that is yes. In fact, I've got one of the students, the process, the process, um, let me get rid of this uh, branding underneath here really quickly. The, um, the process, let me see really quickly. Oh, this is Catherine. Uh, the process, Catherine, is exactly the same. Now, what happens inside of the book is up to you, but my students write their own books. Uh, so fundamentally, the content is yours. Uh, the reason why is oftentimes different. More times than not, the people that I work with are business owners writing their book to grow and empower uh, their brand. I don't know why I said power is right underneath me. I guess that's why that word just can't, great word. So a lot of times they're using it. So the reason why on the book is different, how you would promote it is different. Uh, and so yes, I'm certainly happy to work with you on fiction. That said, there may be other coaches out there that will show you better how to promote your book on fic fiction. My uh, promotional tools are typically best for nonfiction books. So uh, anyway, as you're watching the show, by the way, if you're interested in having a chat to see if the program's right for you, just email me, coaching at edrush.com, and my team will get you on the schedule with me before we start next Tuesday, uh, just in case you have any questions about the, the book program. That's for you, Catherine, or anyone else uh, who happens to be watching. All right, so I'm gonna do the wrap up uh, real quick. I wanna say hello to my man, Russ. So Russ Gordon's son, Matthew, is like one of my favorite people in the whole world, all right? This is a kid who's got a heart of gold, all right? And last I saw, I saw a list of people on his wall that he was praying for every day, and my name was on that list, my man. So thank you, Matthew. You're the man, and uh, we're just all studying to be the man. <laughs> so I uh, appreciate you, uh, man. I love you, Russ. Thank you, buddy, for, for saying that. All right. So a quick review of what we discussed today. We were talking about uh, hair, oh, wrong button. How to share your message uh, with the world. The step one was to get your message by sharing your message. The idea there was to just begin sharing. Next thing you know, you're gonna come up with great ideas that you didn't have before. The second one is to make your message easy to understand and implement. I talked about some of the best and most successful movements started with previously accepted ideas that were repackaged. The third thing is to speak it first or write it first. I will show you the board real quickly and just show that up on the board there were two routes. One was to the speaking route and the other one was the writing route and how you can start with either one of those to begin your process. If you choose the live stream, social, or speaking route, then you create a one hour version, a 10 minute version, a 20 second version, and a two second version of your message. And then you put it into a book and I talked about the book publishing route and how to share your message with the world. What's up, Stevie? I haven't seen you forever either. Uh, thank you for your awesome comments uh, as well. Uh, and so that's it for today. Don't forget on Thursday, we're gonna talk about how to write a book in a month. I'm gonna walk you through the process of how to create content fast and have a lot of fun uh, doing it. Don't forget what I said in the beginning of the show, which is this. You have a message that's really supposed to change the world. There's no plan B, there's no backup plan, it's you. It's your unique message that you're going to share with the world. And I asked the question, which is, when would now be a really great time to share it? Well, now. Because the light always shines brightest when it's dark, and it's kind of dark right now. So now's a great time to go share your message with the world. I will see you on Thursday. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down there and the bell notification. Uh, we're live on Tuesdays and Thursdays, 10 o'clock Pacific, 1 o'clock Eastern. Ed Talks Live is out.